Hey, hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is an iReal Pro tutorial on how to make your own backing tracks. iReal Pro is a very popular app that tons of musicians are using to practice improvising over chord progressions with, and it happens to be an excellent choice for making your own backing tracks, taking any chord progression you want, manipulating that chord progression, changing the tempo, changing the sounds, getting to practice over them. Uh, this is a really great resource for that. I use iReal Pro all the time when practicing. I use it on my channel, when demonstrating improvisation techniques. I use it in my courses when teaching improvisation. I will link to a few videos in the description where I use this app uh, while teaching on my channel, where I improvise over chord progressions. If you wanna see it in action, check out those links. A lot of people have asked me if I can walk through how to make your own backing tracks with iReal Pro, so here it is. This is not a thorough tutorial on how to use the app in general. It's just about making your own backing tracks. And it is a paid app. It's about in the $20 to $30 range. And there are great alternatives if you don't want to pay to get an app like this. But uh, it is really worth it if you're considering it. I've used this for 10 years. I paid for it once. I've been using it for 10 years on all my devices. It keeps improving over time. And I just find it to be really useful. I'm not affiliated with iRoll Pro in any way. I don't benefit from telling you that. I'm just telling you what I use. And I use it to teach. And people ask me for this resource. And I want to help you as much as I can. So here it is. I'm on the computer application here. So you'll have to find the alternative for how to do it if you're on uh, like an iPad or, or tablet or if you're on your phone. And you'll be, you should be able to navigate those differences by just kind of searching around. But if you're inside the application on anywhere you are, to get started, you want to find the little pencil icon up here on the right. And then you'll have many options. And I'm going to choose blank. So we're going to start totally from scratch. So this is what it looks like now if we want to make a song totally from scratch. Then you can edit um, maybe just whatever if you want to put a title in here. So my amazing progression. And then you can put your your uh, your name in there, a composer or whatever you want or a song that it's from. Uh, if it's just a random progression, you can just put any note there. You can change what you think, what you want your default um, style to be for when it plays back. Same with your default key signature. Those are things you can change later. Um, all of this you can change later. So I'm just putting in a few of those things. So we have those default settings there. Now we're just right here. And what we want to do is type in whatever chord we want. So I was playing with a chord progression the other day that I was really enjoying. Uh, that was D over A. And when I start typing, it shows it up here in the right corner. So D over A, that's a D triad with A in the bass. Then once I'm there, this is how I do it. So I like to use my keyboard keys to or I'll, if it's a touch screen, I'll kind of just make sure like count one, two, three, four, and just make sure that I have those four spaces for four beats. That is if I am in four, four. So that reminds me to put the time signature in here. You can choose any time signature. Let's just go ahead with four, four, since it is common time. And we'll go one, two, three, four spaces. So we know there's four beats. And then over here, the symbols, we want to choose the bar line. So if you're on the left side of it, choose the bar line. Um, that applies to the correct side. And see, I've, I put the wrong one in there, so I'm gonna undo that. So um, just get it in the right spot. The reason I'm emphasizing that is I've done this a lot and uh, it's easy to accidentally kind of eyeball it wrong. So I might, um, I might accidentally just move it over three spaces and then that looks like a measure, but it's actually not four spaces long. So I deleted that and then I am here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put another chord in. So I'm gonna go up here and G, and just a few things I'm gonna let you know along the way as we do this. Um, this is kind of nice. You can put the root in of the chord that you want, and then it's gonna show you a drop down menu of every possible chord type that iRoll Pro lets you put into it. Now, one kind of challenge is that we have to get used to the conventions that iRoll Pro is kind of making us stick with. So, for example, this chord, I actually want it to be G major seven. Um, in writing out music, my preference is to write this MAJ7. I just like how descriptive it is, but it's showing me blue there because it's not um, actually liking that. It's not going to trigger it for the play along track. Um, so I have to choose the triangle seven, which does mean it is a symbol for major seven. This is usually the jazz symbol for major seven in this application. It was invented based on the idea of the real book. It's called iReal Pro. It's like a digital version of the real book with chord progressions. I use it for everything though, pop music, songwriting, writing, jazz, improvisation as well, and, and um, 
just all kinds of uses. But uh, the triangle is the convention they're going for with uh, for major seven. So I'm going to go on there four beats over. Make sure that's four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and we're just moving right along here. I'm going to go ahead and play the D over A again. Now you're going to see me do this a lot in this tutorial. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to copy this and just paste it there. So um, it copied even this next bar line. Now, of course, we see the 4-4 there. I did that on purpose because I wanna show you that if you do end up copying and pasting, which once you get some chord progressions going and you're gonna repeat anything, that makes it so quick. So I just need to get rid of that time signature there. And then I need to um, change this so it's not a double bar line, it's just a regular bar line with these um, options over here where it says symbol. So we're moving right along here. The next chord I'm gonna put in is A7. Okay, so now we have our basically is one chord, four chord, one chord, five chord, nice kind of typical progression. A lot of amazing melodies could be written or improvised over that. So we're gonna move on. Um, and actually let's go ahead and say we're gonna repeat that. So I'm gonna use this repeat sign over here and I'm gonna put it at the beginning. You don't need it at the beginning. You could just have it here and it'll repeat, but I like to just show, okay, that's gonna repeat. And then let's move on. We gotta, we gotta write a bar line in. Now, let's say you wanna go on to another section. I'm gonna go ahead and put in B minor. You could put in B and, and then look, say, mm, what kind of minor chords are we working with here, okay? Looks like the convention that they're using is little m as opposed to minus sign. So if I put the minus sign in, um, oh, interesting, by putting the minus sign in, it automatically um, wrote it as m. So I pressed minus sign and it wrote it as, as little m's because that's the convention that it's wanting us to use for minor, which I, I use that as well if I was just writing this out by hand. So, okay, B minor triad is what I want to use there. Now, I'm going to use a very standard progression here that I really love that we've all heard a bunch. Uh, sometimes I call it the stairway to heaven progression uh, because we're going to use a minor chord. And now I'm going to add the major seven to the B minor. I'm gonna add A sharp, and I'm gonna have that in the bass. So now the bass is gonna go down a half step while we keep the minor chord. This is very cool. We can see now where it's lined up with the next one, so I don't, I don't have to count over so specifically. Uh, but this progression is gonna be really, really nice. So I'm gonna go B minor again, and I'm gonna have that bass go down uh, one more time, and it's gonna go down to A natural. Okay, so the bass is moving down. I like this progression a lot. Here we go, B minor again, and I'm gonna have it be B minor over G. So B minor over G, I'm writing it that way kind of in terms of composing because I'm thinking of the bass moving down, but B minor over G, well, it's actually the same thing as G major seven, which is a little more straightforward. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and write G major seven, G major seven. This is where theory is very fun and very cool. B minor triad with G in the bass. That was an accurate way to write that, B minor over G. It just happens to be the same exact notes as G major seven. So I'm just gonna write it as G major seven, which might make it a little easier to think about if I'm improvising over it in terms of thinking of chord tones and scales and, and what uh, appropriate notes and how I might want it to sound. So there we go. Let's go ahead and add a repeat sign on that too, just to kind of practice using those uh, repeat signs. Let's go ahead and, and copy this whole thing. Okay, now we have a ton of that. I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take the repeats away after all because I wanted to just do the copying. Now let's say, I'm gonna show you a few more things here. So so hang with me and then we'll listen to it. Um, or let's, let's just jump to something totally different. Let's go ahead and just think in the key. So I'm thinking in D major. I'm gonna go ahead and do um, E minor seven. So that's the two chord of the key. And then we'll go ahead and do um, A seven. That's the five chord of the key. Let's make that a little more um, extended. A 13, that's a dominant seventh chord with a 13. Um, I have theory lessons on all this stuff on my channel. If you wanna search my channel, there's, there's lots of chord theory stuff on here. So if any of that's confusing, um, do check out some of those other videos. And then we're gonna go to, let's go ahead and go to D6-9. Okay, that's the type of D major chord. Okay, so what I wanna show you here is um, I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and do B7 sharp five. I'm just kind of, whoops, not D7 sharp five, B7 sharp five. I'm just kind of making this up as we go here. Um, and this, I'm gonna have it lead back to, uh, this is the five chord of E minor, so that's gonna sound quite good. In fact, can we listen to it here? Yes. Okay, so you can listen to it while you're working through making your uh, making your chord chart, if you're making it from scratch or editing it, any, anything you want, just so you can hear how it's going and you don't have to save it and stop and play it and save it and stop. So that's very nice. So what I wanna do here though, is I want to actually show that this 
is the first ending. Okay, well, I'll do it this way. This is the first. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so I just highlighted that there and then press said first ending. So when this repeat happens, that's the first ending. It's going to go back. And then we want to um, maybe, maybe do D69. Okay, here. And we say that that is the second ending. Okay, so now it's going to go, um, and I'll do a double bar line here, and then I can start over. Let's say I want to do this again. Um, let's say I want to do this again right there. Okay, so now it's not going to go past here. I need to get rid of this. But that's a nice way to kind of make sure it stays lined up. So nothing is happening right here. Like the music is not going to be, it's not going to be registering it there. Okay, so now we have, if we start here, it's going to go E minor 7, A13, D6, 9, first ending back to this. And then this second time, it's going to jump to here. And then it's going to move on to here. Let's listen to it. Okay, see how it none of this applied. So it just keeps it cleaner rather than if I if I tried to just keep the song going and then it like that was the end because of the second ending and then that's not even looking anymore. So making it nice and clean and even looking is the way that I like to do that. So um, let's go ahead and just say we're gonna end on we're gonna go just A7. I'm just gonna clean it up and and end it here. I do need to show you this. That means repeat the last measure, so that's very handy. This means A7. That means that measure again is gonna be A7. And if you want to even do repeating, this means repeat the last two measures. So whatever these two measures were, that's gonna be the same thing. So uh, if you know some of these conventions, if you know how to use a coda in general, this you know instead of showing you how to use a coda, if that's something you wanna use, you'll figure it out from just, um, the option being here now. So now I'll go ahead and do D6 and um, end it off completely, put a fermata there, which means it can just hang on that for a while. So you see what I'm doing here. So whatever your song is that you, you know, whatever you're working on, whatever you want to do, um, you have all these controls to do it. And then um, I'm going to save it right here, close it. So now I'm just in this and then we can move around, uh, change the tempo a ton. So what if I want it to be like really slow to practice with? Okay, now if I want to change to different instruments, to piano, I'm going to change the tempo up. Okay, if I want the bass to be electric bass. Okay, now I don't worry too much about how good is it, you know, some, some of the styles might be cheesy sounding, some might, the medium swing is quite good. I like to put it on the roads and then um, acoustic bass and then, you know, have the drums down a little bit. And I actually find that it's, I want the harmonic uh, information to be accurate and then practicing over it just is such an amazing practice tool. So if something is not, if it sounds kind of cheesy, like if we go to gypsy jazz and say, what does that sound like? You know, I, I don't concern myself with that too much, right? If I want it to sound more real, I, I'll, I'll record, I'll start recording in a digital audio workstation or make a loop on a loop pedal, right? So it's a practice tool and I don't overthink any of that stuff, but it is fun to play with. And if you know what you're wanting to use it for to get out of it um, so you can hear the harmonic accuracy and work on it in various ways, then it's super, super useful. Now, this doesn't need to, to be very long to show you next how you can uh, take any sheet music that you have in here to edit it um, simply by copying one and then doing whatever you want. If you don't have sheet music in here and you don't know how to get it, there's this little globe symbol. If you click on the globe symbol, it's gonna take you to the forums and you just click on anything in the forums and you can download ridiculous amounts of sheet music. So that's how I got all of these. This is 1300 jazz tunes. I'll just take any of these. I'll click this again and I will say duplicate. You could edit the song, but you probably wanna duplicate it. And now it has a new title that just says one after it. You know, just you wanna mess around with it all you want. Doing everything we just learned, but just starting with anything else that exists. Say we'll take another one, we're gonna duplicate it. Now we're editing this. This has sections here. So this is the A section. You can put the A there. This is the B section. If you had another section, you could say C. Um, if you had another section, you could say D. So the editing comes in handy if if you want to start with something and then you know have a bunch of material to work with instead of starting from scratch.
scratch. If it's just your own song, if it's just something you're making, uh, then just I usually will just start from blank and get really used to that. So we went through quite a bit there. Again, if you want to see me playing over chord progressions using this app and how I use it in videos, you can check out some of the links in the description. If you are using an app like this and if you're a jazz player or interested in jazz, which a lot of people using this app are, it's a huge, uh, it's a very beneficial app for improvising over jazz progressions. Well, you probably also want to be able to play the chords. And I have a free download for how to interpret any chord, like literally any chord of any jazz tune, any of these that we see, if I go to all these, you can play any of these chords with literally eight shapes, eight guitar shapes, it's very simple uh, guitar shapes. So there's a method booklet that I have called any jazz chord, you can download that totally for free. It's in the, there's a link in the top of the description. Um, and it really works. And it's it's chord voicings I use all the time, any of these D flat seven alt, uh, B flat minor nine, A minor nine, E nine, sus, whatever you see, A flat 13 sus, whatever you see, uh, G flat diminished seven, there's eight shapes you can use to play any of these. And uh, it really works. I had someone uh, email me recently showing me them a video of them playing at a gig. And they say, hey, look, I'm playing all these jazz chords with this jazz trio. There's a singer and a bass player. And they they said, I learned these from your, uh, from your download, from your booklet, where you showed me those shapes. And it really works. And it, it sounded great. So you can get that totally for free. Link in the description. Or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash any jazz chord. If that sounds interesting to you, I also have a video about it. I'll put a link on the screen here right now so you can click right over to that. That is what I recommend uh, watching next if that appeals to you. I post a video lesson every single week. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.